Well, good morning, everyone. How are you? Oh, that's good. Okay. Now, I have to say that I actually prepared this sermon twice. Uh, so I've got two different lots, and unfortunately, I haven't coordinated it very well. So I'm going to have to try and pull things together from this. But we're, we're going to be looking at uh, Galatians and chapter 1. And uh, before we start, yeah, can we just bring this before the Lord in prayer? This is all about Jesus Christ and his gospel. And we need that revelation that comes through the Holy Spirit to be able to appreciate it, to have the eyes of our hearts opened, to be able to see something of his glory. Let's pray. Lord God, we want to just bow our heads before you and acknowledge that you are Lord, you are our Lord. And we thank you that you have reached to us, Lord, in such a wonderful way that uh, it's your desire that we are with you for all eternity, that we know you, that we're able to see and experience you, to feel your love and to respond to that love as well. And I ask, Lord, that uh, you work in this time. Lord, help us to uh, understand your word towards us and to, yes, Lord, respond from full hearts towards you. You are so good, Lord, and we want to give you honor and glory this morning. Amen. Amen. Okay, now, um, as uh, yeah, Pastor Tim has already mentioned in the Sunday messages, uh, the book of Galatians, or rather the epistle to the Galatians, is really from Paul, who is desperately concerned about their situation, in that they seem to have actually turned away from the gospel of grace and are going back to living a life under the Jewish law, going back to circumcision, going back to following all the different Jewish uh, rules and regulations, they have somehow lost the gospel. They have somehow fallen from grace. And Paul is absolutely desperate to re-emphasize what the gospel is to the Galatians. And I think that this is something that we also need to grasp. This is not just a message for the Galatians 2,000 years ago. This is a message for Christians today. We need to take a good grip on what Paul is saying to the Galatians. What is the gospel? And we must not let it go because it is the grace of God. So let's read then from Galatians chapter 1 and from verses 11 to 24. I want you to know, brothers, that the gospel I preached is not something that man made up. I didn't receive it from any man, nor was I taught it. Rather, I received it by revelation, and it says in my version, from Jesus Christ. It should read, of Jesus Christ. For you have heard of my previous way of life in Judaism, how intensely I persecuted the church of God and tried to destroy it. I was advancing in Judaism beyond many Jews of my own age, and was extremely zealous for the traditions of my fathers. But when God, who set me apart from birth and called me by his grace, was pleased to reveal his son in me so that I might preach him among the Gentiles, I didn't consult any man, 
nor did I go up to Jerusalem to see those who were apostles before I was. But I went immediately into Arabia and later returned to Damascus. Then after three years, I went up to Jerusalem to get acquainted with Peter and stayed with him 15 days. I saw none of the other apostles, only James, the Lord's brother. I assure you before God that what I'm writing to you is no lie. Later, I went to Syria and Cilicia. I was personally unknown to the churches of Judea that are in Christ. They only heard the report, the man who formerly persecuted us is now preaching the faith he once tried to destroy. And they praised God because of me. So, in this text that we have before us, the Apostle Paul is anxious, first of all, to get across the origin of the Gospel, but then also to give his own personal testimony of what happened when the Gospel was revealed to him, and what he did after that, what changes took place. So, first of all, the origin of the Gospel, and what it isn't. The gospel is not an invention of man. The gospel did not come from some human philosophy. It wasn't made up by any human mind. And also, it was nothing that Paul had been taught by man at the same time. The Apostle Paul wants to emphasize that the gospel did not come from man. Not even the apostles in Jerusalem. He didn't get the gospel from them either. Instead, he says, he, re <coughs> excuse me. he received the gospel as a result of revelation of Jesus Christ. <clears throat> now, this can be understood in two ways. It could be a revelation that Jesus has given to him, like a, a revelation from Jesus Christ, or it could mean that it's actually a revelation of Jesus Christ that he saw something of the Lord Jesus, which, of course, he did on the road to Damascus. <clears throat> now, there is a, a sense that uh, all of us, when we understand something of who the Lord Jesus is, that comes from revelation through the Holy Spirit. Do you remember... <clears throat> In Matthew 16, when Peter, he confessed, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And then Jesus responded to him saying, blessed are you, Simon, jo son of Jonah, for this wasn't revealed to you by man, but by my Father in heaven. So the gospel is something from God. It's from the heart of God. And it's communicated by revelation. It's more than just an academic understanding. <clears throat> Excuse me. But the, the gospel is also a revelation of Jesus, ultimately. The gospel is all about Jesus, in fact. He is the gospel. He is the word of God. It's good news. That's what the gospel means, of course. 
God so loved the world that he gave his only son. This is good news. Our Jesus Christ, he humbled himself, left his glory, took on flesh, came and lived amongst us. This is good news. He was born of a virgin. This is good news because he lived a life of righteousness. This is good news. <coughs> Excuse me. His life of righteousness has also been imputed to us. This is good news. It's wonderful news that's often neglected from, from the gospel. I can never, ever live a righteous life. It's not in me. I'm born into sin. But Jesus lived that life for me. Every part of the life of Jesus was lived in absolute righteousness. Not one sin there. And this righteousness through faith in Jesus Christ, covers us. We are clothed in the righteousness of Christ. And this is good news. That Jesus heals the sick. That he casts out demons. That he raises the dead. This is good news. This is gospel. That he suffered on the cross. That he died for our sins. That we might be forgiven completely and eternally. This is gospel. This is good news. That not only what did he die, but that he was buried and that he rose on the third day. This is good news. That his kingdom is coming. It's good news. And that Jesus is coming again. This is good news. This is all gospel. But it's all about Jesus from beginning to end. It's Jesus. He is the gospel. Now, Paul tells us through Galatians something about himself. He gives a testimony. First of all, before the gospel was revealed to him, and then after, and the difference that it made. First of all, he says, You heard of my previous way of life in Judaism. Paul was a very, very observant Jew. A Pharisee, in fact. So he was very carefully observing all the Jewish rules, regulations, both from what Moses had revealed, but also the teachings and traditions of the fathers, as he says. Obeying the law. In fact, he was so enthusiastic that where he saw something that he believed was coming against the law, like this sect of Nazarenes that we now call Christians, he persecuted them. He did what he could to be able to stop them. And you remember from the book of Acts how when Stephen was stoned, that Paul was there looking after the coats of those people who were casting the stones. He approved of it. He was there helping it happen. He was persecuting the church, trying to destroy it. And in fact, in 1 Timothy, Paul wrote to Timothy... And he said, this is in chapter 1 and uh, verse 15 onwards, here is a trustworthy saying that deserves full acceptance. Jesus Christ came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am, <coughs> excuse me, of whom I am the worst. But for that very reason I was shown mercy so that in me, the worst of sinners, 
Christ Jesus may display his unlimited patience as an example for those who would believe in him and receive eternal life. Now sometimes, of course, we exaggerate things. I don't think Paul was using this as an exaggeration. Paul looked back on what he had done to the church. Remember, the church is the bride of Christ. The church is so precious in the eyes of the Lord. And Paul was against the church. Paul was trying to destroy the church, to wipe it out from the face of the earth. And Paul, he could remember that and he could say, I am the worst of sinners. But, but, God could have mercy on him. God can use the worst of sinners. Praise God, there is no one who is so bad that they're beyond what God's grace can actually do for them. There is no one who is so bad that Jesus' blood can't avail for them. There is power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power to save. And Paul, he says, I was advancing in Judaism beyond my contemporaries. He looked upon it as a competition and he was winning that competition. He was so religious. Things were going so well for him in Judaism. And then it all changed. And he had to repent. He had to repent from his righteous acts. Those things that he had been doing to try and earn a righteousness. <coughs> He had to repent of how he had persecuted the church. He had to repent of all that happened in his life up to that point to try and win God's approval. Now, there is something in this text that we often overlook that is absolutely amazing. It's shocking. I don't, is anybody here actually from a, a Jewish background? Have you got any uh, Jewish ancestors? Uh, no, I think we're all in a very similar situation that perhaps we, we lack some of the, um, the background to really understand what Paul is communicating sort of through that. Now, can you try to imagine that um, there's this Paul, he's Jewish, and the Jews are waiting for a Messiah. They're waiting for God to reveal the new son of David, the king of kings, the Lord of lords. And all of the Old Testament is pointing towards this, this time, this fulfillment of the ages. And Paul is waiting. And there is this revelation of who Jesus Christ is. And Paul understands at that point. He is the Messiah. He is the Christ. He is the one that we've been waiting for. But the revelation is too big. It's too big for the Jewish people. Do you understand? Jesus is so big. He is so great. He, the Jewish people cannot contain this grace. So for Paul, he isn't just waiting and seeing the fulfillment for Jews. He sees that the gospel is now something that flows to the, the peoples, the nations. It's something that cannot be contained within Judaism because the gospel is too big. 
Jesus is too great to be contained, to be limited in that way. And so we read in in Galatians chapter 1, By his grace he was pleased to reveal his son in me, so that I may preach him among the Gentiles. This is shocking. Absolutely shocking. Paul, the Jew of Jews, the Pharisee, the one who was so righteous and religious, now understands that God's love is not just for the Jewish people. That God's love is flowing out and he's determined to be a part of that. He understands that it's a call of his life to go to the nations. So he doesn't go to Judea. He doesn't go to Jerusalem. Where does he go? Arabia. He goes to the Arabs and preaches the gospel to the Arabs. It's absolutely amazing that in the Acts, round about this time, after Stephen had been stoned, you get some Cypriots and some people from Cyrene in North Africa speaking to the Greeks and bringing the gospel to the Greeks. So we see that actually God is working through these Cypriots, working through Paul, and it's the same thing, that the gospel is going out to the nations, to the Gentiles. And I don't know about you, but I need shaking up again when it comes to the greatness of the gospel. That the gospel is good news for the nations. Jesus is for the nations, for all nations. Is it because somehow or another we've uh, lost how, how great Jesus is? Is it, is it because perhaps we've forgotten that the love of God is so vast? that that we're trying to actually contain it into a small small box or whatever. We think, oh, wonderful, Jesus loves me. The love of Jesus is so vast. It's for the nations. And I don't know about you, but I want a refreshing from God. I want to remember how wonderful the gospel is that the gospel is the power of God for the salvation of the nations. Changing lives. Now, there's something else here that Paul mentions that's really wonderful. Is that, uh, well, you see, the Jews had the Old Testament, so they had the context to expect a Messiah and something of who the Messiah would be. I mean, if you read texts like from Isaiah 53, for example, it's so clear about who Jesus Christ is through some of these passages. But the nations don't have the background. So how are they going to see Jesus? How are they going to get this? And Paul, he says in Galatians there, that God, who set me apart from birth, called me by his grace, was pleased to reveal his son in me, so that I might preach him among the Gentiles. Do you get it? Jesus was revealed in Paul. People could look at Paul and see something of Jesus. The curtain had been pulled to show something of Jesus in Paul. That he might go to Arabia, go to Cilicia, go to Damascus, speak to the Gentiles there, and they would be confronted. They would have an encounter with Jesus through Paul. Isn't this also true for us? If we are the children of God because of 
for adoption by faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Don't we have the Holy Spirit? Don't we bring something of the fragrance of Jesus into the places that we are? doesn't matter the, the workplace that we're in. The fact that you are there, that you love Jesus, and that you have a willingness to bring something of Jesus to the people that you're with. Christ is revealed in you. Something of the Lord Jesus is made manifest. And of course, this is despite our so obvious weaknesses. Mm. As sinful as sinners, it's through grace, of course. It's God's grace. Mm. God can use even us, people like you and me. His strength. Well, Paul, he also says that God who set me apart from birth, who set me from my mother's womb and called me by his grace. Paul, who now saw the gospel, what the gospel is, and that it's for the nations, not just for him, not just for the Jewish people, but he recognized that this was under God's sovereign rule and will. But from his birth, God had been in control. He had a destiny because God's hand was over him. And that's the same to you and me. If you are a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ, God set you apart from birth. God has a purpose for you. He knows you and he has you in his hands. Well, in in the remainder of chapter 1, Paul again wants to emphasize to the Galatians that the gospel wasn't from Peter, it wasn't from James, the brother of the Lord, it wasn't from the apostles, it was through revelation of Jesus Christ. Have you Have you had that encounter with Jesus to see the good news, the gospel, that it's for you and that it's for the nations? Let's pray. Yes, Lord God, we're just so amazed at how great you are. And how good you are. And Lord, when we think about ourselves and um, how undeserving that we are of anything of this, Lord, we, we just see how awesome your grace is towards us. But I ask, Lord, for, for every one of us here, help us, O oh Lord, to know more of the vastness, the ocean of your love that reaches to the nations. And that your gospel, it's for us, but it's for more. It's for Cyprus. It's, it's for the nations around. Oh, Lord, help us, I pray, to have something of, of Paul's revelation that he knew, Lord, that uh, this was something that couldn't be contained, that it had to, had to be released, Lord. And we pray, Lord, let your kingdom come and let your will be done for your glory. Amen.
Yeah. Right. Okay. Well, are we saying the grace? Yes. In that case, can we stand up and remember? Um, we're not saying this really to the Lord. We're saying this to one another, and it's a blessing on each other. So let's bless one another through saying the words of, of the grace, the second Corinthians. Are you ready? Yeah. Right. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all forever. Amen.